Good morning, Jamie. Good morning. Hi, everybody. Thanks for tuning in. We have an amazing show for you today. Uh, Diane Crump, the first woman jockey to ever race in the Kentucky Derby, is going to be joining us live here in about like 10 minutes. Unreal. I'm so excited. Happy Monday, everyone. Happy Monday. How was your weekend? It was good. Packed. We had summer camp um, this week, so I've been running around with all the kiddos. So we did our cocktail show. Did our cocktail show. That was super fun. Lena was on. So if you haven't got a chance to check that out, Lena was on. It was fun. It was so fun. Yes. Um, Okay. So we don't have any women in the news per se. Right. This week. Which is weird. Women start doing awesome things. <laughs> Not that you aren't doing awesome. Maybe right. news, ABC, NBC, CBS news people start yeah. covering these women. Yeah, that are doing more awesome women stuff. in the news. We need more women. Yeah. Okay, but instead of that, um, I'm seeing all these posts from my friends, like on Facebook and Instagram, of their kids starting this like virtual learning. Like, yes. they had to set up desks. They had to get computers. They had to like do all of these things. Do you think all the crayons are sold out like all over the world? I'm sure. Like, I <laughs> set up my first graders. Like, I turned my whole sunroom into like this schoolroom. I like put up the school posters with like how to change like learn about time and letters and numbers. Like oh, all the things. Because she's learning how to tell time. I know. She That's... started. Today was her first day. Oh. Starting. Well, she did, okay, so here's a question. Does she have a backpack? If she's doing no. homeschooling so she doesn't like pack her, she's like, here I go, I'm off to school. And then she like walks into the sunroom, here I am. That doesn't happen. <laughs> no. Okay, so That's I was like researching, like I was doing some research. Like, yeah. How is this going to work, right? Yeah. So hold on, let me pull up this article. So it was in People Magazine. Okay. Oh, no, I've lost it. Um, but it was People Magazine, so they okay. gave you like a list of things that okay. are important to do. Okay. Like with your kids' virtual learning. Okay. So one is um, set a schedule. Yes. Super important. Be understanding of emotions. Because mm. that can be really frustrating. Very frustrating. Yes. Right? I can tell you, and since we've done a lot of virtual stuff, like sometimes it's hard, like if kids are, you know, if they're not all on the same page at the right time and they can't get their question in, sometimes it definitely is frustrating. Right. I think it's yes. frustrating. Um, be patient. Mm-hmm. Let them go outside. Mm. Um, as a parent, ask questions, but not too many questions. <laughs> <laughs> like that's hard. Yeah. How do you know how many questions are appropriate? Like, is Lena gonna say to me, like, um, you get four questions today, mom? <laughs> like, I don't know how that's gonna I work. I feel like Lena is gonna be conducting, she's gonna be doing double school. Like she's gonna be doing her school and then she's gonna be off to the side, like dissecting an animal working on her is. doctorate. <laughs> I mean, I think so, right? Yes. Um, but anyway, so it was like all this good list of things. So moms out there who are yeah. starting virtual schooling, hang in there. Yeah. You are not alone. Right. Um, share pictures of what like your school area is looking like. We want to hear from you. What are you doing that's working? What are you doing that isn't working? Yes. Like, share that stuff with us. Yes. Well, not with you, but with me. I know. Yeah. I need to know. I'm excited about, I, I think that this year is going to be definitely an unprecedented year, but you know, they're going to look back on it and be like, remember that time during this pandemic? Remember that plague that made us stay home and we couldn't do anything? And I always think that it's funny when I hear kids talk about, they're like, it's the coronavirus. Like all the kids, like I feel like parents have done such a good job of explaining to them what's going on. So all the kids, you know, like we were talking about, like they say like, don't come near me. You have the Rona. No, like that's my kids now, like back and forth to like tease each other. Like, get away from me. You have coronavirus. Yeah. (laughs) Corona is like the new cooties. Right. It's like, don't touch me. Yeah. And then there will funny. be, like, the cootie shot. Remember when you said you had yes. to get the cootie shot? Now there'll be the corona shot. Oh, one more thing I did remember from the article. This yes. is good for you. Okay, so tell me. Okay. Um, they said, don't leave out the extras. Like, art class, music See? class. Yeah. And so, like, tell us what you're doing with Picasso yes. Swick. So, art is so, you know, like, I am a big proponent. Um, yes. I've done art my whole life. I think it's so important for the growth of kids, both boys and girls. Um, it's always good to have an outlet and a creative outlet that they can learn stuff. And that's what we were trying to stress in camp this summer is, you know, let your kids do it. Let your kids go through the experience of learning things and making things on their own. Um, because every time we do it, like, people are, you know, the kids are so empowered by doing things on their own. I agree. So, we're going to do some art classes of course we'll probably do some after school stuff I was waiting to see like when the schedules come out and stuff um we'll do that but we're gonna do a big sale this week I think on all of our Ooh. crafts so check out the website Ooh, okay that sounds good and this is a good time so special thanks to our sponsors yes shout out Panera Bread 
Thank you. Shout out to Picasso Swig. And then Denise Remy. Denise, Denise is doing Ramey. like something super cool Denise this Ramey. week. Let me find the details for you. Denise Ramey, um, realtor. Um, if you're looking for a house, if you're looking to sell your house, Denise is awesome. Um, she has tons of great properties on the market. She, she really, has so many. Go to she, her website. Yes. But what she's doing this week, which I saw on her Facebook page, yeah. she's doing a food drive. Ooh. On Friday, August 21st, they'll be collecting food um, at the Crozet Baptist Church. Food awesome. For their pantry. Oh, that's great. So yeah, um, if you're out there in Crozet or you want to drive out there, that'd be great. Right. Yeah. So food check pantry. out her uh, Facebook page, her website. There's more details on there. Support this food pantry. I mean, it's hard. people are having a hard time. They really are. I know. And the food, I think that even our local food bank and everything, I think that they are they have lines out the door. You know, and now that unemployment, Ugh. they took away that extra money. Um, you know, unemployment is only, I think it's like 360 or $380 a week. So that's, that's not insane. that much money for people to live on. Well, especially not if you're buying like fresh fruit or vegetables. Right. That's going to get you like uh, right. nothing. And why is that? Why is fresh fruit I don't know. so much more expensive? All the healthy food is so much more expensive than the crappy food. But like a hot dog and a bag of chips is like a buck. Right. That's what right. I used to eat when I was in college and right. I was like dirt poor. I would go to yeah. this gas station called Quick Trip. I would get, you could get a hot dog um, and a drink. Or a bag of chips for a dollar. Right. Like, that's what I lived on. I Hot dogs and chips. I don't like that. I think that that should be switched. I think that it should be cheaper to buy fresh fruit and vegetables so that people can yes. have that. Because why can I buy a big thing of Kool-Aid for a dollar that'll last me 17 years? But if I go to buy one of those green power drinks, forget no. it. No rent. No. Can't pay anything you can't for the anything. next six months. No. Okay, I wanted to run a school idea by you now that I'm back on the... Now I'm oh. stuck on the school thing. She loves talking about school. I do like okay. that. Okay. <laughs> so... On Jerry's show, he's talked a lot, and we've talked on our show, like the public school kids versus the private school kids. Yes. I'm uh, assuming that uh-huh. the private school kids, because there's fewer in a class, yes. and they're doing it like distance learning, yes. right? they're going to get a better ed- education. Because you can't talk to like 40 kids on a Zoom call. Well, right? I... So how about this? This is my idea. Okay. Private schools in Virginia, listen up. Okay. I think you should... Share the videos of the teachers teaching private schools Mm -hmm. and then let it be free to anybody in public school. Mm -hmm. But then the public school teacher is responsible for um, answering questions and returning emails for their students on that video. Let's make it fair across the board this year only. Yeah. Right? Why can't we do that? I like that idea. Governor, do that. Make yeah. it mandatory that private schools that are doing virtual learning um, tape their videos with the private school teachers and let it be shared. Yes. One year only. Yeah. I love that idea. I think that the more it's kind of like, especially when you're learning education, like the more the merrier. Like we're trying to not withhold information. We want our kids to be as smart as possible. Right. But then I get that argument like, well, then why would I pay if I can get it for free? Okay. Because I mean, you're paying with the, for the small class. You're paying for the interaction with these amazing teachers. Right. Like, just pay for it. Right. This year, pay for it Let's and just, share it. Right. Let's share it with every kid in Virginia. Yeah, I, I agree. I love that idea. Do you think the governor is watching? No. Governor? Of course he's not watching, but I'm just saying. What do you think he's doing right now? Where is he at 1030? I don't know. Ralph, but I'm just saying. You? I feel like that's a good idea. I feel I like, like that would make it an even playing field yeah. for all students of Virginia. Yeah. No. I mean, I love that idea. It's not going to happen, but I just liked it. <laughs> I love it. (laughs) Are you ready for Diane? (laughs) I am so ready for Diane. All right, guys. So Diane Crum. Yeah, it's going to be exciting. Do you know, as you call her, did you know um, that the Kentucky Derby like does this special um, men julep? Ah, you told me. Okay, so they do like this really expensive, are you calling? Yeah. Okay. Um, This really expensive men julep. I can't hear any ringing. Okay. Um, Expensive men julep. It's $2,500 and it's named after... um, Diane Crump this year for her 50th anniversary. I am so excited to talk to her. I cannot wait. I'm going to ask her. I want to ask her about her minjula. I, I wonder if she's had it. <laughs> Your call has been forwarded to an automatic voice message. Okay, well, she's not answering right now, so we'll try her back in, like, just a few minutes. We got her voicemail. We but I'm sure voicemail. she's, like, waiting. She totally Maybe she got waited. a call. Yeah, maybe. Okay, Let's so anyway, it. this minjula. Keep going. Um, yeah, is uh, $2,500. It comes in, like, this amazing glass. We should, like, post a link to it. Hello? There she is. Hi, Diane. Hi, Diane. It's Kelly and Jamie. I'm fine, thanks. Good. Well, welcome to our show. 
Well, thank you. I appreciate it. <laughs> well, we are so excited to talk to you. Um, I used to live in Louisville. I grew up going to the Kentucky Derby, and um, I love horse racing, and it is such an honor to be talking to the first woman who ever ran in the Kentucky Derby. Yes, well, it was pretty exciting, but it was 50 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> so can you tell us about that? Like, what was that? How did you become a jockey? Good question. I actually can't hear you. Oh, okay. Um, hold on. Let's see if we can fix that. You can hear us, Stan? Can you hear I us? I can hear so much in the background that I can't hear you. Okay. Judah, we're having uh, some issues with uh, hearing. Sound. Sound. Um, I don't know if there's anything we can do to cut down background sound. Okay, yeah. we're going to try to fix that. Let's see. Should I, should I hang up or you call me back? No, just hold on for one second. Um, okay. okay. Judah's going to try to fix this uh, volume issue for us. Yeah, because what you're, ta you're asking me something and I can't hear you except for the background noise. Okay. Interesting. Hold on just one sec. Is she hearing us through the computer? Yes. Okay, then Jamie, why don't you just move the computer closer and do the interview so then she's not having the feedback. Okay. All right, let's, well, let's see. Diane, can you hear me a little bit better if I get closer? That's, yes, that's better. Do that. Yes. Yeah? Okay. All right, so this is better. So Kelly was asking, so tell yeah. us a little bit more. How did you become a jockey? You know, I just fell in love with horses and riding. And so I, as a kid, I came up, well, when I was 12, we moved to Florida and I got a job, job on a racehorse farm and I had my own horses. I tra trail rode. I mean, I didn't even really know that it was a thoroughbred. They just hired me to handle their wheelings. <laughs> so I came up with that and little by little, they asked me about breaking their yearlings and then about, you know, would I like to come to the track to visit the horses that had just shipped in? to race at Tampa for the winter. So, I mean, it was a slow process, but I just, everything about horses, riding, and the racetrack fascinated me. And so how, I think just one thing led to another. How old were you when you started riding? Well, I mean, as a kid, we grew up in Connecticut. There really wasn't anywhere to ride. I'd go, we'd, they'd give me a few riding lessons once in a while and take me to a livery stable on Saturdays, but... You know, I wouldn't exactly say that I learned how to ride doing that. <laughs> I mean, a little bit. It fueled, it fueled my passion. Aww. So when, we, when, I was 12, when I was 12, we moved to Florida. And then they prom my parents promised me I could get my own horse when we moved, and that was true. I did get a, just a little quarter horse to trail ride. Started out with that. But where we moved was actually really close to, it used to be Sunshine Park, now it's Tampa Bay Downs. Aha, uh -huh, yes. So we moved very close to that. And fascination of even just seeing the track, even though it was empty, it just, I don't know, it, it held a true fascination for me that I can hardly explain. It just, I don't know, I just loved every aspect of it. And then I got a job on a thoroughbred farm and handling weanlings. And little by little, I, you know, I started to break yearlings and then, learned how to gallop, and I was, but one of the trainers there would smuggle me in, and, and you know, I would just walk hops and just do, you know, I would do any odd job, anything. I just, I, fascination was so strong, it's hard to believe. I mean, I was just so attracted to it. It was crazy. <laughs> And so tell us, like, okay, so during this time leading up to the Kentucky Derby, tell us what it was like for women. So obviously you're the, the only woman in this race. So what was that day like? I was reading the article that, that you were a little bit contested because at this time there weren't, you know, a ton of women in the sport. So what was the time like? You know, that error was very anti-woman because the first – Right, you know, I had pro started riding just a little over a year prior to my ride in the Derby. So for that, I'm going to say for that first decade almost, 
But in those first two or three years, I mean, it was very anti-women. They just didn't feel that, you know, women were capable, strong enough, smart enough, cool enough. You know, I mean, all those feelings were there. I mean, it was a male-dominated sport, 200 years of, you know, all men. Right. So, I mean, I think it just took time to break that barrier. So, I mean, those first, you know, the first few years were, you know, they were tumultuous in the fact that, you know, there was a lot of press that was, you know, negative and just a lot of the trainers and just a lot of people in general, riders, everybody that just didn't think that we were going to be capable. And so I think that was the hardest thing. But once it settled in, you know, I started riding more horses, winning more races, right. showing that I could compete at every, you know, with, with, at every level, that it wasn't a problem. So I think little by little, it changed. It just took, I'm going to say it took a decade to start changing uh, the opinion. That makes sense. So you showed those men how it was done. You didn't let it stop you. <laughs> no, I mean, you know, I, I don't know if that if you'd say it that way, but, <laughs> but you know what? You could say it that I showed them that I was just as capable and equal riding as they were. I mean, if I was on a horse that had any kind of an opportunity, then I could win the race. I could come down to the wire and beat them in a photo. So, I mean, I think it proved that no matter what happened, you know, women were cool, they were level-headed, they could handle a horse. I mean, handling a horse is not just strength. I mean, obviously, if a horse weighs 1,000 or 1,100 pounds and a rider weighs 110 pounds, I don't think it's that much difference whether it's a man or a woman. You know what I mean? It's the, it's the feel for the horse. It's the way you get along with them. And in all other equestrian sports, Women are not only equal, they're usually superior. I mean, they well, I won't say superior, but they there usually are w- more women competing in the other equine sports than there are men. Right. Diane, so I'm going to say women are superior. In... Say that again? I said I am going to say women are superior. You know, all we can say is we're equal. True. Right. You know, if you're if if you're if you're good at what you do, then you can be superior in that aspect. But the, the, pro, the main thing was that we were able to show that we were equal to the challenge. We could rise up. We could beat anyone on a, on a given day if we had the right horse. And so, we, you know, mentally, physically, we had the ability. And that's what mattered. And that's what, you know, that was what it was about, that I... I loved it with such a passion that why didn't I deserve to do it as much as any man? I worked hard. I worked every day, seven days a week. I loved horses from the time I was four years old. So I did everything because I loved it. It was I was passionate about it, and I knew I could do it. I knew in my heart that that was fine, that I was equally capable to anybody out there. And you absolutely were. So what did you do... After the Kentucky Derby, what 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 did you what went on from there? Did you keep riding? How long did you ride? Well, I ro- well I st- I rode my first race in 1969, and I rode my last race in 1998. So I rode for 30 years. Wow. So I mean, in the interim, I trained racehorses. There were years I didn't ride; I just trained. And then there were year- the latter years. I held a trainer's license and a jockey's license in the states they were permitted. I was permitted to hold both licenses, and I rode the horses that I trained. So, I mean, I was in the business for 40 years. I love racing, I love horses, and I love riding. So, it was my life, it was my passion, and I felt that anyone that feels that way deserves that opportunity. It doesn't matter who you are. Right. Well, you paved the way. You paved the way for every woman, you know, that wanted to ride not only in the Kentucky Derby, but just in any race. Um, and exactly, exactly. And, and now I hear you love dogs. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? Once I, I did wear myself out 
in those 40 years of, you know, riding a lot of horses, galloping 20, 30, and more a day for 25 or 30 years, wow. breaking yearlings, in injuries, just totally wear and tear. So, I mean, I love all animals. So with that, I was able to, you know, <laughs> when I stopped riding, and then it took me two years to get out of pain, just that my shoulders are worn out, my knees are worn out. Uh, sure. Well, my whole body, basically. <laughs> but I, I'm very physical, and so the next step, I sell horses. That's what I do as I'm an agent. Okay. So I sell horses, just like just like I'm a real estate company, only for horses. Right. So I want a horse. I'm, I'm, around, I'm around them all the time, but because I need something to devote my passion to, which related to the dogs, and with the dogs, I wanted I I love to help people, and I wa- was looking for something that I could do that would be helpful and that you know could pay back. And so I found the therapy work with my dogs, mm. and so now I've been doing that for several years, and I love it. Well, I they mean, are cute. They're dachshunds. What the dogs can do? Are they all dachshunds? The, you know, the, the, they are. I have miniature dachshunds. <laughs> oh, they are the cutest. So what is next for you? Are you going to keep selling horses, keep doing with your dogs? Well, How about your family? Is your family into horses, and are they in the business with you? No, not, not, none of my family has ever been interested in horses. <laughs> and the only family that lives close to me is my, my daughter has three, has, is married and has three children. So, you know, I'm involved with them, just that I enjoy doing things with them. But, I mean, I have my business. I don't have any plans. I'm stopping that, but the one thing I want to do is enlarge or increase, I call it my dog ministry, and I call my little guys the mini missionaries. Oh, I love so that. that oh. I would love to expand that. So that's my next step, and so I'm actually trying to get involved with, well, I'm, I work at, with them at the hospital, although it's on hold at the second, sure. but I still visit hospice patients with them now. Aww. So that's my, my goal now is to expand my dog ministry so that it can be affect more people. I like to be able to help people. And I've seen so many ways that people can relate to the dogs that, you know, for whatever reason, they don't have anyone. People have let them down. They need an, ad, need, need an advocate, whatever that might, might be that the dogs sort of open them up a little bit just that they can they can communicate with them just because they're so they're just non-judgmental right and with that it op- it opens the door for me to be able to you know find out what their needs are and what I can do to help that's them awesome so that's my next goal is to create a, a bigger ministry with the with the dogs and to, to try to do more whether it's you know, with the homeless, whether it's just with hospice patients, it doesn't matter what it is. That's my goal is to increase my ministry. Well, you are an inspiration, not only in the horse field, but in the world of women. We love you. We think you're amazing. Um, And if there's anything we can do to help you grow your dog ministry, let us know. Are you fundraising? Are you looking for dogs? Like, what can we do to help? Right. Yes. Yes. Just to do that. So I'm actually working, well, not working with, but going to two different um, Christian ministries that do outreach. One does outreach to with prisoners and one does outreach with the homeless. So I'm t- um, with that, I'm trying to see how do I personally get more involved with that? Because for them, you know, for me doing it as a volunteer, they, they don't really, they, I haven't seen where they give me that many opportunities. So I'd like to be able to do it on my own. That's something good. that I can do. Well, I think that's amazing. You know, UVA Children's Hospital um, has a dog program. Um, 
So it may, that might be too far for you, but if it's not, I'm more than it, happy. It, it is. Well, that's, that's quite a ways. That's almost two hours away. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, if we can think of anything, if anybody watching um, can help out Diane, yes. reach out to us, and then, Diane, if someone reaches out to us, we will pass them along to you. And I would like to know about her mint julep. That Do you want... So, Diane, Kelly and I were talking about earlier that you had an official mint julep named after you. Right. <laughs> Did you see that? Well... Well, I, I've, I've actually spoken to them. If the Derby would have been held as normal, then I was invited by the heirs to the horse that I rode the Derby oh, in the Derby Oh, no course. way. That that's would so have awesome. been amazing. So, that, so that's how that came about, because Brown's Foreman Distilleries was owned by Mr. Brown, who was you know owned the horse that I rode in the Derby. Oh, that would so have been because amazing. So because of that, they invited me, and then they, they told me what they did. They always, you know, sold the mint, mint juleps to, you know, for the cost that they had. <laughs> and then they donated those wow. profits to, you know, some kind of fund that you were interested in. Yeah. And so the disabled, jo the disabled Jockeys Fund obviously was perfect because when I had a bad injury, they helped me. Oh, that would have been full circle. That would have been amazing. And Kelly was telling me, how much does the mint been. julep cost? <laughs> so much. It's $2,500 for this mint julep. Have you tasted it? No. <laughs> I haven't been there for 25 years. <laughs> oh, well, <laughs> and we would back love... In, back in those days, I was with horses and I didn't drink. <laughs> Well, one day, uh, the three of us are going to have to get together so we could have these mint juleps together. We would love that. <laughs> well, that would be fun. <laughs> I'd like that. Yes. And then I have one more question. So, and if you're, I don't know if you're allowed to tell us this, but what is the biggest purse that you've ever won Ooh, while riding? Ooh, good question, riding? Jamie. The biggest injury? No, the biggest amount of money, like the biggest purse. Oh, I'm sorry. I have, was having a hard time hearing you. The biggest purse? Yes. You know, I, <laughs> I don't know. Because, it, you know what? In my day, the purses were a lot smaller, and I hardly rode in those kind of races. Oh, that's true. I'd right. say the biggest... The biggest race I won was fifty was a fifty thousand dollars stake. Wow, that's amazing, though. That's good. And do you remember what? So the day that you were riding in the Kentucky Derby, what was like the big race? Like the winner would get how much money? Do you remember what it was on that day? Well, it was a million dollars then, so that would have been six hundred thousand. Whoa! So the winner gets six. <laughs> the winner gets sixty percent. The winner. Oh, right, because you have to split it between like the owners and all that stuff. That is so, so and then the rider gets. Well, you know what? It was an it was an amazing journey. Yeah. It was, you know, you start out as a little kid, you follow your dream. Every door you knock on gets open, whether even if it's just a window. Yes. <laughs> but you keep walking toward that dream. You keep living your dream. You never let it die. You follow that passion, and you don't give up. Aww. And when you do that. When you do that, greater things will happen to you than you could ever imagine. And I definitely found that out. What a note to end on. That Nothing. is the perfect way to end the interview. Judah, cut that into a sizzle reel. <laughs> Diane, we love you so much. Uh, you are an inspiration to all of us, really. Um, we couldn't be more excited for you, and we yes. cannot wait to have mint juleps with you. Yes. All right, perfect. <laughs> I'll be waiting for that. Awesome. We are on it. Yeah. Thank you so much, Dan. Okay. It's a pleasure. Bye. Happy 50th anniversary. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate it. <laughs> we'll see you soon. Okay, great. Bye. Thank you. Thanks. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> she was the best. What a, like, an inspirational interview. Like, that's why we do the show. She has so much spunk. She does. I loved her. She was getting lots of comments. People love her. Um, we love you, Diane. You're such an inspiration. I loved her message. I mean, right? what, imagine that time that she was writing it. 
I mean, 50 years ago, there's no other women except her. No. And all these guys, you definitely, like, she wasn't telling us, but you know that all, I was reading an article, all these guys are saying, like, women shouldn't do this and women shouldn't do right. that. And Diane went in there and she was like, hell no. <laughs> hell no. I am doing this. I am in it. And she is she amazing. She was amazing. I loved it. I loved everything she was saying. Um, love we should her. definitely, let, let's send her like a care package of mint julep stuff. I would love that. We should do virtual. Wouldn't that be funny? <gasps> we should have her on virtual cocktail, cocktail hour. hour. Perfect. <laughs> we'll make mint juleps. We'll send her a kit. That we'll bring her on for uh, a cocktail hour. That I'm sure she would amazing. do it. Amazing. Oh, what an no. amazing woman. And look at how, how she's giving back to the community after all that she's done. Um, so I know. she had I loved an injury it. which caused her to stop riding uh, many years later. Um, so that's why she doesn't ride anymore now. And she kind of started this therapeutic program. But I mean, what an incredible, incredible I know. You look lady. at her Facebook page. She's like surrounded by all of these mini dachshunds. It's I mean, the cutest thing. I loved it. Oh, it's, um, she's incredible. Incredible. Yes. People are saying, how you. interesting. What a great story. Yeah. I, I agree. Okay, so should we do a quick game? Oh, what game? Okay. Yes, tell me. So you're the artist, so yours is going to be better than mine. Okay. I draw like a kindergartner. Okay. Okay. Let's... Uh, yeah. Judah, can you time us? Give us uh, 30 seconds. We're going to see who can draw the best horse in 30 seconds. Ooh, let's draw Diane on the horse. Let's draw... 30 fifth, seconds? Yeah, so we'll do... Yeah, okay, 30, 30 seconds. seconds. Diane. Okay. okay, Judah, you tell us when to start. We're doing Diane on the horse. Yeah. Right. Here we go. Okay, yeah. Jamie, okay. you're gonna kill me at this thing. A, a horse. I haven't. I don't know if I've ever drawn a horse, Jamie. And yours is gonna Giant be like very artistic and nice. Head. And mine Diane. is gonna be like She's riding. She has um, a mane. They have manes, are. right? Ooh, she has like a hat. Don't Ooh, they yeah, have they big have, like, teeth? Do they have? They have big teeth. No, they have just horse have, like, teeth. A snout. Mm-hmm. Okay, uh, Diane. Oh, we have to have reins. Okay. <laughs> I, I might do better than you on this one. Jeez. Oh, no. Two, okay. Okay. Oh. Wait, no, my tail is going up. Okay. Time. Go. Okay. Okay. How did you do? Okay. Let me see yours. Okay. This was mine. Oh, why is yours way better? I picture Diane in a big <laughs> hat, and I think she was holding a mint julep as she rode in the <laughs> derby, and apparently her horse wasn't really running. He was just, this is before Floating. the race. He was just standing there, and she was drinking... Uh, Mint julep. julep. Okay. Okay, let's see yours. Uh, here's mine. <laughs> <laughs> I told you I can't draw. Oh, that is so good. That's like it's, a... Look at the teeth. It's, it's like, like, a, like a unicorn. Yeah. Sla- like, look at the one strand <laughs> his, for the tail. His tail is so sad. It's like a <laughs> unicorn pig horse. <laughs> I know. Oh, okay, that was try. the best. Okay, so we, maybe, Diane, we're going to send these to you um, for your 50th anniversary. We thought you would love <laughs> this in a frame. <laughs> <laughs> we, we'll put it in the gift basket for the mint julep. Yeah, we're going to put this in with our... Ba- we're going to sign our autographs on it because clearly you want those. <laughs> and we're going to frame you. You never know. I know. Kelly, <laughs> Kelly and Jamie, we're sending this to you. Okay. So Okay, I want to move on I to something it. else. Okay, what are we moving on to? Tell me more. Um, you know, during our cocktail hour, I don't... Whoever was watching, thank you for watching. It's always fun. Always mm-hmm. tune in. We never know when we're going to do it, but we give you 24 hours notice. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, we try to. Yeah. Sometimes we just feel like doing it. I know. This week was just very hectic. It was a very hectic week. Okay. Mm-hmm. But we were talking on our cocktail hour. Um, sh- Camping World or Winnebago? Mm-hmm. com. Either one of you. Yeah. Jamie and I are not outdoorsy people. We do not like bugs. We do not like mud. We do not like dirt. No. Um, we're not like no. hiking for fun up mountains. No. Um, I haven't put on a pair of sneakers in about six months. Even okay. though it was cold out. Right. So we are inspired by some of these amazing people Yes. Like we have on that are like doing new things and adventurers. And yes. um, so Camping World or Winnebago or, or, you know, Bass Pro, whatever camping Winnebago place out there. Yes. We want you to loan us mm-hmm. a Winnebago or a small camper. Just a small one. Like for two weeks. And we want to drive across all the way to the Grand Canyon mm-hmm. and back. And we're going to like do live shows constantly. It would be hysterical. If Jamie and I come back alive, <laughs> that would be a miracle. We want to uh, take miracle. this Winnebago on the road. We're going to go cross country. I want to see the world's biggest toilet. I want, and we're I, 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 we, we want to stop at like every crazy roadside 
socially distanced attraction. Right. And we also talked about in our cocktail hour, if you watch it, that we are going to bring along a mini Jerry and a mini Judah. <laughs> so we're going to have heads. like a tiny bobblehead of Judah and a tiny bobblehead <laughs> yeah. of Jerry so that we could take them because we thought if we invited them that they wouldn't really want to come. No, Judah would murder us in the night. <laughs> because we would like drive him insane. But anyway, if you're watching, or if anybody out yeah. there has an RV or a Winnebago that Winnebago. they are willing to give us, the only requirement is that it has a bathroom. Yeah. Winnebago, we would love for you to sponsor it. Or anybody out there that wants to donate their time and expertise, I really want, have you seen like those I don't, short buses, like the shorter buses? <laughs> Do you know what I'm talking about? Like, they're like yes. half of the school bus? Yes. Okay, I, I say we buy one of those. Okay. And then if somebody's willing or has the expertise um, to, like, outfit it as, to like... glam it up. To, like, glam it up. Like, yeah. rip out the seats and glam it up. We'll drive that sucker across yeah. country. And we're going to... Jamie and I are going to paint the outside. <laughs> it's going to say, like, the glam short bus. Kelly, and just our face Could we the glitter the whole outside? Uh, yes, we absolutely could. That's what we're going to do. So if, <laughs> if either one... Either one. Someone get us one of these things. A glittered short bus would be the best thing ever. Yes. I would love that. So Winnebago, anyway, you should we need help. That. Somebody help us with the Please. with the redoing the bus or getting us a, a camper Winnebago something. Please. Please do. Us. Okay. All right. Also, on that note, because yes. now I'm like on a roll with okay. like this camping uh -huh. kind of thing. So I've watched everything possible so far, I think, on Netflix. Yes. And Hulu. And so I was on Amazon Prime. And usually I'm like, Amazon Prime, like, eh, it's not my fave. Yeah. But I was like, oh, I haven't turned that on in a while. Maybe there's yeah. like something cool. Right. So there is a new show yes. that I'm obsessed with called um, The World's Toughest Race Eco Challenge in Fiji. Okay. Yes. There are 60, you have to watch it. There's 60 teams, team, total teams. Each team has Four people that are actually doing the race together. Yes. And then one, like, support person that's, like, at different base camps, like, yes. trying to cook the meals and stuff. So these 60 teams, teams of four, you have to stay together. Yes. All the time. They're, like, canoeing. They're building rafts. They're, like, rappelling. They're, like, hiking through the jungle. They're, like, riding their bike for, like, a uh, 100 hours. So it's a 24-hour-a-day race for 11 days. I saw the first, I started to watch the first episode last night because Kelly's been talking about this. And the first one, so there's all these teams lined up in these little canoes. Oh, it's insane. And they have to not only paddle for all these hours like around this island, but they do it at night. Right? With sharks? There's sharks underneath them. And see, like, there's no way I'm doing no. this. Okay. But the point being, okay. so there were like, I think there are four or five, maybe six U.S. teams. Yes. One of the teams um, that I loved is one woman... And these three guys. Yes. Okay. Um, her name is Lena. Yes. McKnight. Same as your I daughter. reached out to her. Yes. And she agreed to come on the show. <laughs> I, I can't am, wait. I am dying. I am so excited. Can't wait. She's uh, going to be amazing. I want it. Like, how do you, I don't know, like doing an Iron Man, yeah. I think is tough, but that's like one day. I mean. This is like an Iron Man times a bazillion. Yeah. I don't know. She is a badass chick for sure. Like yes. she is like. She's a mom. She owns um, her own company. She's a military wife. So she's coming on September 21st. So FYI, <laughs> that's like our new get. I am like beyond excited about it. Kelly and I would have got. Watch the show. Kelly and I would have tried to get on the canoe. It would have toppled over. We would never have made it off the beach. <laughs> no, we would have just said, um, forget it. And then once we like got in, we'd be like, oh, I'm just not going to play anymore. <laughs> yeah. I was like, not going to do it anymore. Could you imagine? We just fall. I'm like, oh, the water. It's so it's good. Cold. Like, so nice. Messy. It touched me. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So Jamie and I are going to try over the next couple of weeks uh, some of our own challenges. Yes. We're not, b believe me, we are not biking even for a mile. <laughs> but we're going to try some other Yeah. We're going to walk up a big hill by Kelly's house. It's a big hill. Right. And we'll tape it because I don't think Jamie. We're not going to get there. We're not going to make How it. How far do you think the neighborhood, through the neighborhood we get before we call the Uber? I mean, we can call Adam, my husband. He'll have to like drive down the hill, the mountain to like pick <laughs> us up. I think we'll get 45 minutes in. We just knock on your neighbor's door. We're like, yeah, we're pretty. We're just here. Can we have a glass of wine? We're waiting for Adam. <laughs> yeah, we just <laughs> Adam comes. He's like, oh, in, our, in our workout clothes. <laughs> we didn't even try. Yes, but I'm very excited about it. I know. That. Lena's going to be awesome, so shout out to her. Um, are you ready for product picks of the week? I, I am. I'm ready for product picks product of the week. Product picks of the week. <laughs> oh, no. Judith, here we jingle. go. Singing again. Judah, the jingle. We need a jingle. Okay. Why has no one messaged us saying that they have a Winnebago for us yet? Ugh. 
Someone's going to do Winnebago, it. Winnebago, where are you? I know you're out there. I've been watching. Um, okay. Do you want to do your sunscreen first? No, I didn't bring it. I forgot. Oh, I'll have to bring it next Lord. week because okay. I do love it. Well, and this it's is like, even... of course, why would I, like, now I'm going to promote it, but it's like the end of August. So. Okay. This is even better because I'm, okay, I'm super excited about this product. Okay. Um, Let's get them. So, let's show everyone this. Um, These are the, so cute. And this so soft. is the okay, best go. product. I'm going to hold this up so you can see this. Kelly's How yours cute. Is the cutest. So what this is, is this is a car seat poncho. It is the cutest. So this is from Birdie Boutique. They are incredible. Their customer service is amazing. Oh, and I'm going to read to you. So the company was started by two Polish sisters. Okay. They started by making um, stuff for their kids. Okay. And um, so she told me that one of them was an educator. The other one um, was a disabled Iraq war veteran. What? And these, amazing, these two sisters got together and they created this product. So you know that when you put your kids in a car seat and it's winter, fall, and you have these bulky sweaters and things that... Yeah, it can be not, like super dangerous. Right. Very, very dangerous. Right? It's not safe for you to do that. So a lot of times what you do is, like, if parents will strap them in, this is a way for your kids to be covered, and it doesn't detract. It's crash test rated. What? So this How do you is even like, get that? I know. They're really doing it. Um, and I'll read you it. So all those bulky, bulky layers under the buckle can actually be really unsafe and lead to ejection in the case of a collision. Okay. So this poncho is designed to be worn over the car seat buckle while still keeping little ones warm and safe underneath. And so I got it and I was like, well, this is kind of, this is like heavy, right? It's a little I mean, heavy. But what they said was they're made of heavy, breathable fleece. So they adjust with the changing temperatures. Perfect alternative to a jacket or coat, fall through spring. So easy that kids so can even cute. put them on themselves with no zippers. This is so cool. So okay, these but I think also as they get older, like I'm going to give this one to Rory because she's going to like wear it as a poncho around the house, like lounge about. Uh, yeah. and I'm going to take that one too. I mean, I'm I, about, you don't need anything for that. This is I'm amazing. Do you think I could put it on? No, your head is too big. No, it's <gasps> You could wear it. Oh my God. I am totally, how does this look? Uh, I'm so totally good. I'm going to wear this. Um, I love it. It's very, <laughs> so it's very comfortable. It's I wish much, that I had, too much. Kelly's one has the unicorn horn. Yeah. Oh, look at this. this so, so as cute. an adult. So it's like, oh, yeah. I love that. I love the unicorn horn. It's the cutest. I wish I had a horn, but. Wait, is this inside out? Is it supposed to be this way? I guess you could do it any way you want. I guess you could do it either it way. It doesn't matter. It's probably, it's washable, breathable. I love this. Birdie Boutique. And listen to this. They gave us, so, so these cute. are on sale on Amazon for $24.99, but they gave all of our viewers a coupon code. That is for 10% off. Um, Look at you um, with we'll that. We'll post like, that. I so, take you serious. And the, the coupon code is Poncho Swig. Poncho Swig? I love it. Are you going to wear that around? Um... I am not taking this off. I love this. I love it. So you can see that not just for kids. I'm going to put Ryan in this because he needs a car seat. Like, he's he's got a big head. I don't think he's going to You don't think so? Through. No. I hope this looks good, guys. So shout out to Birdie Boutique. We love you. Yes. Love you. Love you. Check out their products. If you have kids, they are, you're going to love this. The quality is amazing. Um, it comes in tons of different fabrics and patterns and all that stuff. It's the cutest. 10% off. And these are safe for your kids. Do it. I love it. Get one. Um, get it. And it's going to be winter soon, believe it it's or not, even though it's soon. like, look, like, look at my hair. I'm like frizzed out. It's it. hot as can be. Uh, you're, it's going to get cold soon. I just put on Let's a hope it gets cold me. soon. I love it. Okay. What are you going to do this week? What am I going to do? I want to, I'm going to, I'm going to relax a little bit. I feel like it's been, I feel like this is like the official end of summer. You've been running around like a crazy person. I've been running around like a crazy person. So I think I'm going to do a little relaxing. I'm going to hang out this week. Okay. Um, we'll do cocktail gonna, hour. Yeah. What are you going to do? What's your plan? Well, a lot of school stuff. A lot of school. Like a lot of, ver like trying to get all that set up. Yes. Um, that's what I'll be doing. Um, oh, I forgot to tell you. I actually finished the season, uh, season two of You. Ooh. Crazy, crazy. If you guys out there you. are watching You on Netflix, it's amazing, amazing, amazing. Kelly was right. Season two is even better than season one. I didn't think it could be possible, but it is. There you go. Oh, E. Anna saying, Kelly, I also binged that show on Amazon as well. I'm loving you two together on this show. You're the sweetest. <laughs> you are. It's the fun. Sweetest. It's like not even really a job. We like hang. We we would hang out anyway. Yeah. <laughs> and just record ourselves all day and drink wine. It's pretty much like the best gig ever. It is yeah. a great gig. Yeah. I'm really excited about this road trip. Yeah. Uh, do you know what? Okay. Trip? Yesterday, because we talked about it. Yeah. Um, I got obsessed. 
and like trying to find like a used one that we could like buy or like so then I was like looking I was like oh my gosh the short bus like let's redo that do you know what those are called those are a thing oh okay what is and it it's actually a company hey maybe they'll do it for us um it's called a schoolie s-k-o-o-l-i-e oh. so it's where you take a school bus okay and turn it into a camping thing schoolie if you guys are watching they're an amazing company they like outfit these buses um we'll buy the bus <laughs> Uh, you outfit it. And we, this all kind of started because Kelly was obsessed with the new Volkswagen bus. I want the bus. new Volkswagen. I'm getting that the new was Volkswagen coming bus. So it won't be when out until 2022. So we had to find other alternatives. So originally we were like, oh my God, we have to call Liza from Colonial. She's going to find us because Kelly right. wants like a periwinkle bus. And we were like, if yes. anyone could get this done, it's I need Liza. to be on a waiting list. Liza, like put me on some sort of waiting list if there is one. I, I want the bus. I have to have it. I have to have it in Periwinkle. I need it. But and then it's electric, realized, which I did. And it's electric, which is super cool. So we find these charging stations. Right. But then we realized it wasn't coming out until 2022. We and didn't want to wait. Yeah. Kelly and I can't wait. So this is how this is evolving. We so. want to camp this October because we don't want to miss the largest Bigfoot uh, <laughs> convention in Oklahoma. And it happens in October. So we have to be we like we have to like see what that is. Do we do we dress up in a costume? I'm gonna order a full head to toe <laughs> Chewbacca from Star Wars costume. A, it'll be safe. No coronavirus germs are That's gonna right. come in my. You don't even you don't even have to wear a mask because you're like in the suit. Right. Good idea, Kelly. I will not get Corona right virus, and I'm gonna look awesome. <laughs> and that it's just gonna amazing. be the best. That would be amazing. I love that. Have you seen, is it like the Geico commercial where they're like, it's, oh, yes. or it's Flo, he's like, it's Flo from Progressive. Uh, yeah. And she's like, yeah, Bigfoot. And he was like, mm -hmm. who's Bigfoot? Like, my name's Bob. No, it's Jeff. Jeff. <laughs> he's like, no, my name's Jeff. I love that commercial. Yeah. Okay. So Come a lot on. of shout outs to companies. Today. Yeah. A lot of shout outs. So Brittany Boutique, we love you. Um, yes, you were great. Sponsors. Diane Crump, you were amazing. Thank you. Thank you. Diane Crump. Who do we have on next week, Jamie? Um, there are so many people coming up. Is any, is no, everyone, next week, um, Liza from Colonial. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was just going to tell everyone the big lineup, oh. but Liza from Colonial is next week. Um, That's going to be so she fun. She is so great. She's amazing. Um, I love her so much because, so I, before we opened Picasso Swig, I was in the automotive business for many, many years. Um, I worked at Brown Automotive, which is now Umansky. Um, but I spent Umansky. almost 15 years at Brown and I love them so much. And I, and so Liza at Colonial was our competitor, you know, like our friend, we didn't have, a, a, you know, any of the same franchises right. at the time, but we were like competitive dealerships per se. Um, and I watched Liza start, she ran the Volvo store. So she's always been in automotive, her family, it's the family business. I love that. She ran the Volvo store for many years. And, um, as her parents or her dad, um, Carter Mars stepped out of the business uh, Liza took over and I was so excited to see that because she is really like almost like a mentor like I've watched like because right. the automotive business is so male oriented yes and I used to watch her in her career and what she was doing and I was so proud of her and I remember when she became the president of that auto group I was like I sent her a message and I was like I, I am that. so proud of you like she doesn't admit she's a mom she's an entrepreneur she works her butt off um, the group is so is still family owned they've purchased so many more dealerships I mean now they have a million franchises they're spreading out like everywhere everywhere She's everywhere. a badass chick. She is a total badass. Um, she's a runner. She runs with her kids. She's just, she's amazing. I love her. So I'm, maybe I'm, she knows somebody with a Winnebago. I'm so excited. I bet you do. Liza, if you're watching. Liza. And if you can speed up that periwinkle bus. Yes. That would be good. Okay. Then, then who do we have on? Uh, so next week. What's the next week after that? You tell me. No. Do you remember? We have uh, the author. Right. Joanna Garnett. Um, yeah. so Joanna, I was telling you this before, um, Joanna Garden is, um, she wrote this new book called edge of the map. Jamie's obsessed, obsessed. I finished it in five hours. I love, I'm obsessed with mountaineering and I'm obsessed with people who push themselves to the limit. Right. So limit with, it could be anything like, so these races, like, yeah. you know, that everyone's doing or, or hiking, the jockey the, being a jockey. jockey or Everest, or like, I, I'm just obsessed with people pushing the limits. Um, and imagine, imagine hiking up a mountain yeah. or, you know, climbing right. Everest. Okay. I think you're using the show to fuel your obsessions My to obsession. like talk to these people. <laughs> I love that. Especially like uh, the next week we have, uh, my God. 
Uh, so Rabia Chaudhry is coming on um, from Serial. If you guys give us a Listen like. Listen to the podcast. Give us like a and like. share. Yeah, like we and share. We forgot to say that. And Always like and share our show. Like and share our show. And give us a like if you've listened to Serial. Yes. Um, Serial podcast, um, S-E-R-I-A-L. It's this amazing. was the true story about Adnan Syed. Yes. He was um, a high school student that was convicted of murdering his. Ex-girlfriend. Ex-girlfriend. We can't t- let's not tell more. Listen to the podcast if you have it. Number one Absolutely downloaded podcast ever. Listen to the podcast. Podcast. It's amazing. And Rabia was the family friend of Adnan. So Adnan's family right. and her family kind of lived close to each other. And um, Rabia was a lawyer at the time. And when all this was going down, she wasn't Adnan's lawyer, but she was like the family advocate. Right. Um, and and they're, both of their families have been through so much. Because remember, so Adnan... Um, so everyone knows that he's been arrested. So, but right. he has been in prison for 20 years. So he's right. actually been in prison for longer than he's not been. I, that's insane. Okay, save it. Oh, we don't want to share everything. So listen to the podcast. It's right. amazing. And Rabia has another podcast called Undisclosed, which of course I binge listen to, obsessed with it. I like, I, I really get into things. I know. And know? then we have Lena McKnight. So our lineup for like the next month and a half Lena is McKnight. like rock star women. So many. Hoda I, Copy, we yeah. want you on too. Hoda, are you watching? And Savannah Guthrie. Either of you, both of you. Jenna, are you Jenna watching? Jenna Bush. Jenna Bush. Let's see if she's watching. We're going to tag them. <laughs> We're going to like harass them politely, not in a stalkery way. Right. And it's funny, like when you reach out, like, should we say that? Like, not in a stalkery way. <laughs> we love you. Maybe. <laughs> okay. It was a good such show, a Jamie. Good yes, it was such a good show. I I'm so excited for next week. And uh, a shout out to uh, Jerry Miller, whose birthday is on Wednesday. Jerry, Jerry Give Miller. Jerry uh, some love. Birthday on Wednesday. on Wednesday. Yeah. Happy he, early birthday, Jerry. Happy early birthday, Jerry. He's not into it. He's not into birthdays. But we're excited for him. We're, we're more excited about Jerry's birthday than he is. I know. <laughs> I know. I think Kelly and I just thought we'd get cake, but now he seems not excited about it. So we'll just eat the cake ourselves. Yes. Good. You know, Why not? We'll just, we could do, we could have our own birthday party for Jerry, just you and I. Like let's we have on cake. cocktail. Yeah. We're, let's do cocktail hour on yeah. Wednesday. So since Jerry doesn't want to have a birthday, like you and I will drink the bourbon and we have a cake that says happy birthday, Jerry. Jerry. <laughs> and we like cut it and we have like yes. our own balloons I, oh, well, and we it. buy presents for each other for okay, Jerry's perfect. birthday. <laughs> So Jerry Why waste our money on Jerry when we can buy things for each other? Totally. This is sorry, even Jerry. You're out. Idea. We're in. Yeah, Jerry. Canceled. <laughs> no, canceled. Canceled. His Your birthday, birthday is canceled. He is canceled. <laughs> Presents <laughs> canceled. Right. Bounce house canceled. Right. Judah said we couldn't do anything. Yeah, Judah said absolutely not. But I totally love the idea of buying presents for each other for Jerry's birthday. I agree. This is so good. Uh, look, I got you a poncho. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love the unicorn one. Thank you. And I got you this really pretty gray one that's your house. <laughs> I love oh, it. We are out of control. So, yeah. So, anyway, we'll just finish up the show. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Keep going. Um, yeah. It's going to be fun. Yeah. So, next next couple of good weeks. And then hopefully fun. by October, some you know, we'll, we'll be in on, on a road trip. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I want to drive all the way to the Grand Canyon. Me too. Okay, I'm actually, I'm going to be the driver. I, okay. Because I'm very nervous. No, I'll be totally fine driving. I'm going to have my poncho. I will have my car seat. So, like, I'll put the seatbelt under this so I know it's crash saturated and I'm safe. Okay, and let's paint our faces on the side of the glittery bus. <laughs> we have the glittery short bus. I want to go to we Mount could, Rushmore. We could, we could turn it into, like, um, uh, the Oscar Mayer Wiener, like, bus. People will, like, love us so much. They'll be like, oh, look, those are those, like, nut job ladies in their glitter bus. Okay, so instead of having, like, the wiener on the top of yeah. the bus, what if we just get, like, a wine bottle? Yes! Yeah. So Perfect. if you, if anyone out there can build us a gigantic wine bottle to go on and the top of like, our bus. Oh, winerator, like a kegerator. Oh, yeah! Wine. Yes! Who could do that? I don't know. Um, snowing in space. I know you guys do coffee, but let's face it, we could fill that with wine. So hook up, <laughs> yeah. a, hook up our short bus with a wine, a winerator, a, wi- a wine, a wine, a wine. I yeah. don't know. We, we need the we wine. We need the wine to come out of the spigot. You know what I'm saying? Yes. <laughs> like a yeah. beer tap with wine. Yeah. So hook us up. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And a okay. giant wine bottle. Well, we'll keep you updated. on No them. wieners on our bus. <laughs> that's what I say. <laughs> You are on a roll today. So I can keep going. Wait till I get into song, but all right. It's my poncho. I feel like it's giving me more, like, I feel more special enthusiastic powers. with it. Spell, special powers. Poncho. Yeah. Wait till you put on the, the unicorn horn. I don't think it fit over my head, but we'll try it. Okay. Okay. Thank Anywho. you, Jamie. Thanks, Kelly. Thank you, Judah. Thanks, we guys. We appreciate you. Um, happy non-birthday, Jerry. Yeah. <laughs> we'll see you next oh, week, guys. We can sing that happy non-birthday from Alice in Wonderland. Don't they do that? Oh, yeah. Let's sing that on Wednesday. Happy non birthday, Jerry. But thanks for watching Women Changing Our World. See you next week. Keep changing the world. Yes, and go forth. Yes, and we'll see you. Join us for cocktail hour. Yeah, at some point. We'll see you again. Yeah.
bring your poncho. <laughs> Bye, guys. Ciao. That was a fun show. What a good show. She was a great